Chapter 24 John found strength in the written words of his friend. They had gone into Queens to get the poem from Felix's humble abode. They were going to go out to eat when Felix noticed how empty the cafes were. It's New Year's Eve, John reminded him. Is it? Already? He looked around the streets. You want to go into the city? Sure. They walked to the subway. So what have you been doing with yourself? John asked. Same old, same old. Working, sleeping, preaching. Nothing like yourself. John smiled. He had spent the whole train ride into Queens telling Felix about the divine intervention in his life. Felix listened with little emotions on his face and nodded when he had finished. They were quiet for the rest of the ride in. I've met two people, Felix said. I remember you telling me in your letter that your wife was doing data entry. It's funny because this other couple I met is the inverse of you two. The girl is an artist and the guy is a computer programmer. They move around a lot, but whenever they're in New York, they wind up in Andres. Felix looked down to see John reading the poem as they sat on the train. John looked up. What? he asked. Nothing, Felix mumbled. I was saying how that poem describes an uphill inner struggle within me that taxes my spirit and strangles my soul. Even when I'm hurting myself worse than any human could ever hurt me, I still chug along to the next day and the next day and the next. He looked ahead. You can't let yourself get slowed down or stopped. You have to find the strength somewhere inside yourself to keep going. He looked back to John. It ain't over till you say it's over. Not everybody has your strength. Not everybody is aware that they do. I'm a weak man, borderline schizo. If I can do it, anyone can. They were both quiet for three stops. John read the poem again. So how do you make them aware of their abilities? John asked. You don't. Today, you just have to show them how you do it and hope they learn by the example. But what if they need guidance? <laughs> you could tell them to communicate with themselves, to talk with themselves. The way to escape the mind's tricks and traps is to address the mind from a point beyond the mind. If you talk to yourself, you can convince yourself that the mind holds only limited power over you. Once that limit is established, then you can start living from a spiritual perspective. The peace that follows is great, Felix sighed. <sighs> but when you feel as though you're the only one who is aware of this, the boredom is unending. He looked forward. John handed him the poem. You just have to move through another day, even if you're not looking forward to it. Felix turned and nodded. John could have sworn he saw a tear in his friend's eye. They are at the Lexington station when the conductor comes over the intercom announcing that there is a technical problem at the Spring Street station that would delay all downtown trains on their track. Since their destination is the World Trade Center, they decide to get out and walk downtown, maybe stopping at Spring Street to see what has happened. As they climb the stairs to the outside, John stops for a split second. He believes he hears Jean's voice faintly. <laughs>